Salt is a billion dollar industry in the US. Not only does salt make bland food taste heavenly, it is an important source of iodine, a nutrient essential to our health and well-being. Welcome to Intrigued Mind, where today we will look into the underappreciated history of salt. Salt was first recorded as a pharmacy item in China as far back as 2700 BCE, where over 40 different types of salt were documented. Knowing its value, the Chinese put a tax on salt to increase revenue. Nomads moving westward were known to carry salt with them on their journey, hence facilitating the spread of knowledge about this resource. In terms of production, salt-making techniques were depicted in Egyptian art as long ago as 1450 BCE. Salt was an important part of medieval and modern European history, where its use was widespread. Salt was used in religious rites as a meat preservative for the nobility and for hygiene purposes. Wealthy Britons around 500 CE used salt to clean their teeth. Given that salt is known for its antibacterial qualities, the Britons were certainly onto something. Native American tribes had the know-how for extracting sea salt, as recorded by Europeans who landed there in the 15th century. Salt was so important to the American revolutionaries that one of the strategies of the English was to deny them access to their salt supplies. History was to repeat itself during the Civil War, when the Union captured the aptly named Saltville in Virginia, where salt was processed for the sustenance of the Confederate Army. Many of Napoleon's troops died during their retreat from Moscow. One reason was the lack of access to salt made it impossible for their wounds to heal. Known for its antibacterial qualities, salt has been used for millennia as a cleansing agent. Even in this day and age, people resort to a saltwater gargle to relieve a sore throat as an at-home alternative to drugs. Given our age-old dependence on salt, it is of little wonder that the word has made its way into our everyday parlance. You are undoubtedly familiar with the saying that someone is worth their salt. The saying is a compliment and means that someone has great value and has earned their keep. Yet, have you ever taken the time to consider the origins of this idiom? The answer to this question dates back to ancient Greece. Slaves in ancient Greece were traded for salt. The amount of which someone was prepared to trade for depended on the slave's ability to work. The word salary is derived from the word salt. This dates back to ancient Roman society, where soldiers were partially paid in salt rations, called salarium argentum. The Roman Empire would not have been such a world-shaping success story had it not paid its soldiers. And salt was an important currency in this exchange of goods for service. To say that someone is the salt of the earth is a way of describing someone who is honest and hardworking. This saying dates back to biblical times, when Jesus gave his Sermon on the Mount. He was addressing the hard-working common folk, fishermen, shepherds, and laborers. And speaking of Christianity, a well-known superstition in the West dictates that if a person spills some salt, then they must toss it over their left shoulder to prevent bad luck. The salt is supposed to hit the devil in the eye, thus distracting him and keeping him out of mischief. In 77 CE, Roman author Pliny the Elder translated an ancient medical text advising the reader to take a grain of salt, lest they had been poisoned. The salt was considered an antidote. Today, we still tell someone to take bad advice with a grain of salt, suggesting that they should maintain a healthy degree of skepticism. To add salt to the wound means to make something worse and to hurt even more. During the 1700s, when slavery was rampant in the New World, slave drivers would apply salt to the open wounds of the men, women, and children whom they had whipped as a punishment. These cruel tyrants knew that literally adding salt to a wound made the victim's suffering greater. If someone describes you as salty, it means that you are angry, irritated, or moody. This pejorative comes from as far back as the mid-1400s. It came into regular use as a slang term in the 1800s in reference to seafaring men, sailors who were presumably in a bad temper at having been stuck on a ship with each other and no women for months on end. And we are all familiar with having to get back to the salt mines after a break. This simply means that it is time to get back to work. The slaves of the ancient world would have taken this phrase quite literally. The great number of phrases, sayings, idioms, and slang terminology that Westerners use in everyday vernacular language is testament to how important this substance has been to humanity throughout the ages. Nowadays, Americans certainly do love their salt, so much so that there are various references to this staple food item in popular culture. For example, a uniquely American confection is saltwater taffy. As the story goes, a boardwalk candy store in Atlantic City was flooded with salt water in 1883 and lo and behold, saltwater taffy was born. In reality, salt water is not an ingredient in this culinary treat, but salt certainly is. Then in 1914, a certain little girl in a yellow dress appeared in advertising campaigns all over the nation. 
Morton Salt advertising executives needed to come up with an image to match their new innovation, which was a pouring salt dispenser. The Morton Salt girl holds an umbrella over her head in a rainstorm. The advertising executives wanted to capture the spirit of the saying, it never rains, but it pours, for their new innovation, and thus an American icon who is still with us today was born. So why do Americans have such a deep love affair with salt? A 2015 study into attitudes towards salt showed that 62% of Americans will reach for salty snacks as the ultimate form of comfort food and stress relief. This is despite their knowledge that too much salt is bad for them. In fact, many countries in the Western world have established health guidelines around salt intake that state our processed food includes so much salt that we no longer need to add it to our food as a source of iodine. One such common food source that contains a lot of sodium is sliced bread. In some cases, one slice of bread can contain more salt than a small bag of potato chips. Not surprising, given that an online reprint of the Bread Bakers Guild of America's article about the functionality of salt states that Americans view saltless bread as insipid and virtually inedible. So who was the publisher of this reprint? A company called Cargill Salt. Salt is a billion dollar industry in the US. Did you know that 35% of America's salt comes from deposits beneath the Great Lakes? Let's explore the Cargill Salt Mine, which lies hidden beneath the waters of Lake Erie in Cleveland, Ohio. The people who work the Cargill Salt Mine are made of stern stuff. They work 1,700 feet underground, beneath the lake itself. Workers are carried down into the pits via a skiff. The ceiling, walls, and floor of the mine is made entirely of salt. This mine has been worked for the last 60 years, so much so that the salt at the entrance of the mine is brown with the pollution of diesel fumes. Dynamite explosives blast the salt loose in the mine, which is five miles square. Work crews travel up to 20 minutes by truck to access the outer reaches of the mine, with the trek growing longer each day as excavation expands the mine. Roughly 40 million tons of rock salt is produced in this mine annually. Each year, engineers devise a 25-year plan about where to mine next. Yet, not all of this white gold was destined for the dining room tables of the world. 40% of this salt was used in the chemical industry, and another 40% was used for the de-icing of roads. Only 4% ended up as table salt. This is a potted history of the wonderful white substance we call salt. Perhaps after viewing today's video, you will never look at salt quite the same way again the next time you reach for the humble salt shaker. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel. Like the video and leave your suggestions in the comments below.